Hey everybody, I'm John Rimmer, this is Dina Cardinelli, we're from the training room. Today what we're going to be demonstrating is a prisoner stiff leg deadlift. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a prisoner squat used in warm-ups before. We use a prisoner stiff leg deadlift. It's a great warm-up, it's a great mobility drill for people that have postural distortion patterns and the altered length tension relationships that come along with them. The reason you're going to get a lot of use out of this is it applies to a very high percentage of people. So many people live their lives in a constant state of spinal flexion and then have tension in the upper back or lower back as a result can benefit from this. And the reason we use this is because we found that the traditional static stretching model doesn't really work with that population. It's not really effective. So we look at it from a little different angle. So I just want to demonstrate something to you real quick. Imagine Dina is somebody with very poor posture. If she were an anatomy chart right now, there are some exceptions, but for the most part, the musculature of the spine works like a fan. Up here, it kind of goes upwards and outwards. As you get down lower to mid-spine, it starts to run laterally. And then down lower by the tailbone, it starts to run down and out a little bit more. All that muscle tissue is elongated when she's in this position. And it's going crazy trying to pull her spine back into a normal position, into normal length tension relationships. So all day long, it's stretched out like this, and it's fighting to get back constantly. Okay, so relax. So now somebody with this kind of posture then goes to the gym, they take a spin class, they do a bunch of abs and crunches, then they come and see you and they're like, oh my back is really stiff, my upper back, you show me a stretch, can you help me out with, you with my lower back? It's your responsibility as a fitness professional to explain to them that their muscle tissue, which is like this all day, stretching it even further is only going to aggravate the situation. It's not going to help, which is why we generally don't use it. What we need to do as fitness pros is attack it from the antagonistic musculature and tissues, which are being shortened in this case. In this particular case, the anterior aspect of the spine and the torso. So the prisoner stiff leg deadlift, he is going to demonstrate. As you notice, it's exactly the same as any other stiff leg deadlift that you would use with the barbell or dumbbells or whatever. The two things that you really need to emphasize with the clients though are one, the elbows really need to stay retracted. The minute they start to move, their elbow's going to go forward, the spine's going to go with it, and it defeats the whole purpose. So you need to constantly tell them, pull the elbows back, pull the elbows back. Now, if they do that correctly, and their upper spine does kind of stay in a state of extension or in a neutral position, there's going to be a compensatory pattern down lower in the spine. You may see your posterior pelvic tilt or your butt tuck, for lack of a better word. That person, you need to make sure to emphasize hip flexion, tell them to stick their butt out, because they may not understand what hip flexion means. So say, pull, really pull the elbows back, really stick your butt out. They will not get far. Dean is a mobile person. Most people are not going to get this low, and that's okay. As long as the spine stays in a good position, as long as the elbow's back and the hips are flexed, they won't get low. Now, one of the reasons this is great to use in groups is because whatever the person's greatest area of restriction is, this is going to attack it. If they have restrictions in the pec major or pec minor, they're going to feel it there. If they have restrictions in the anterior aspect of the thoracic spine, they may feel something in the fascia around the sternum or in the abdomen. If it's not spinal related, it's down somewhere in the hamstrings, somewhere below the pelvis in the hamstrings or the gastroc, they're going to feel it there. As long as they do it correctly and they don't, have, don't use an excessive range of motion. However, if you do have somebody that's very mobile and you want to challenge them further, what we do is we put them into a split stance. All this does is, from your perspective, you just need to watch the front leg, the back leg is just there for balance. Heel down, knee is straight but not locked, a lot of hip flexion, elbows back. But when you put somebody into a split stance, they don't want to stay in the sagittal plane anymore. The pelvis wants to rotate, the hip wants to drop or hike, so you just need to watch that when you're doing that with your clients. Okay? Now, try this out on your own, try it out with your clients, and give us your feedback. We'd love to hear what you think. Thanks.